The other day I noticed a carriage sale in Reading and there were a number of items that intrigued me, especially one. So I decided to go along and have a look. The first item that caught my eye was this game and poultry cart. Could this be the predecessor of the home delivery vans of today? I think that it dates from the early 1900s and we can see from the list on the back door the type of game that would have been carried on board. I've spoken to a number of people here about this cart but no one seems to know much about it. But looking on the side I've noticed this sign which may give us a clue as to its use. Clarendon Park has been famous for hunting since the 13th century and looking inside you can see a huge number of hooks so it certainly carried a large number of pheasants, rabbits and hares. On the outside it looks as though there was more game hung from this top bar and then this metal bar on the bottom stopped it from swinging against the wheel while travelling along. I suspect this cart went around the chutes collecting up the game, but as to what happened to it then, I have no idea. Maybe one of you can shed some light on it. Now here are two interesting gypsy wagons or vardos. Both are advertised as being in the style of Billy Wright, the famous wagon builder from Leeds. In the late 1890s, Billy Wright became one of the most respected builders of wagons in the country. One of the first types of wagons he built was the ledge or cottage, as it is sometimes called. This sledge wagon, although built in the 1930s, is certainly very similar to those Billy Wright built over 120 years ago. Look at the distinctive sash windows, one on each side and one on the back. They all have beautiful cream painted shutters, which slide shut using these four cut glass knobs. When aging a wagon, things like these knobs can be very useful, as up to the 1900s they would have been made from China. If you look under the rear window, there is a rack, or cratch as it is called. This was used to carry anything from bender tents to bedding, when on the road. Below the cratch is the pan box, where sooty kettles, pots and pans were kept. The travellers also sometimes kept their bantams in this box, and it was not unknown to occasionally see travellers move off, leaving the bantams racing after their nice hay-filled pan box home. On the side here, tucked between the ledge and the wheel, is the spindle cage for storage of things such as vegetables. And some people say bantams were also sometimes carried in this cage. Around the edge of the roof you can see 12 lion's heads. Each one has a spout for a mouth and their purpose is to channel the water off the roof. It was important though to keep them cleaned out on a regular basis because on the road they could get blocked with leaves and debris. In front of the ledge is another type of wagon Billy Wright was well known for building. This boat up was in fact made around 2005 but it certainly resembles Billy Wright's wagons of the late 1800s. The bow top has a similar undercarriage to the ledge wagon, but of course the top being made from bent hoops of ash, covered with canvas, made them very much lighter, and in turn much less likely to turn over. Above the door, on the crown board, you can see a carved galloping horse. This is common on bow tops made by Billy Wright. All the carvings were bought in, the builder would make panels and after making sure they fitted, would number them and send them off for carving. 
Because various matte paints and gold leaf were used to decorate the wagons, varnishing was necessary and that is what gives it the high gloss. On the back you can see there is a beautiful decorated pan box, similar to the one on the ledge wagon. And on the side, once again, we see the spindle cage for storage. Now here is what I really came to see, and what I really want to show you. This beautiful flat cart, Jack described as possibly the finest flat cart in England when he went to see it being built in 1983. This little yard is lost in the middle of Wiltshire. I doubt if you'd find it, but this is where wagons are still built and where old wagons come back to beautiful life by this man, John Pickett, who lives and works here and who thinks about nothing at all and has done all his time but carts and wagons. And it was this man who built what I say is alleged to be the finest flat cart in England. A travelling dealer man came to him and said he wanted to build just that, and he did it. He went on and on and on at it. I should think he lost an awful lot of money in the end on the price he'd agreed for it. It took him, he says, two and a half thousand hours to build SM, you see. He built it for a man called Sean Martin. and all the carving on it is opened right up and, and then backed. And there is the cart in full view. There's, I should think, almost a thousand pounds of gold leaf on this cart. And the carving, as I say, has been opened up and then backed. And the blacksmith who lives just down the road has done the iron work to his dis definition and then it's gone off for chromium. And at the back of the carved panels, once again, they are backed, every one of them, with engraved mirrors. As you can see, Sean Martin's flat cart has not really changed much since it was built by John Pickett in the early 1980s. If you were to count these horses' heads all over the cart, you would find there are 77, each individually carved and gilded before being varnished to protect the gold leaf. If you look closely at the edges of the wood, you'll see how the weight of the cart was reduced by butterfly chamfering. This method lightens the cart but does not affect the strength. Now what do you think these chrome brackets on the back are for? They are there, so when the shafts are lifted to an almost upright position, the paintwork on the back will not be resting on the ground, and therefore become damaged. Look, here comes the auctioneer. So it looks as though the auction is about to start. So let's see what price it reaches. Painted and built and painted by John Pickett in the 1980s, very elaborately decorated, beautifully carved, as I've said, sign written, all the bits and pieces. The real deal, ladies and gentlemen, this lovely spinner cart, lot 25. Where would you start me? I mean, we ought to be thinking of somewhere sort of six, seven, eight thousand. Where are you going to start me? Who's got five for it? Four thousand, thank you, I've got. Straight in at four thousand, four thousand, four thousand and a half. Five thousand and a half. 6,000 and a half, 7,000, 7,000 bid here, I'll take two if you like, at 7,000, at 7,000, two more, at 7,000 the bids here then, you're all done finished at 7,000, thank you sir, two, three, four, seven. Enjoy it, it's the family, yeah? Come on, I'll give you a number, if you have a morning room, we're only in Ashford in Middlesex, like by Shepherd yeah. Studios. Okay? Yeah. So do you collect? I've got one or two bits and pieces, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've got some Have you had the John Pickett stuff? No, I haven't had yeah, this the No. When Sean Martin owned the cart, he would drive it around the gypsy fairs of England, proudly showing it off to other travellers. 
I think that this is unlikely to happen again, but I do know the new owner will enjoy preserving this wonderful piece of gypsy history. The Jack having seen it said, I have no doubt that the claim that's made for that vehicle of being the finest flash in the traveler's world is correct. If you enjoyed this program, please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell if you want to be notified when more videos are available. And if you would like to buy the complete Old Country series of 60 programs, please go to the link in the description below.